Welcome to this NetBackup 7.6 demonstration on preparing NetBackup for VMware Virtual Machine Protection. Before we begin, I want to take a few moments to describe the demonstration environment that we are using for this demonstration. First, the NetBackup 7.6 Master Server is a system named NB-Master. This system also has the VMware vSphere 5.1 client installed. The NetBackup Media Server is a system named NB-MSDP. As the name implies, this system is configured as a media server deduplication storage server with its associated disk pool and storage unit. The system name vCenter is a VMware Virtual Center server running vCenter Server 5.1. There are two VMware ESX 5.1 servers in this environment named ESXi-01 and ESXi-02 respectively. ESXi-01 has four virtual machines. ESXi-02 has three virtual machines. The names of the VMs are listed on the diagram of the environment. The organization of the VMware environment is illustrated in the partial screenshot of the vSphere client user interface shown on this page. The domain name of the lab environment is lab.pvt. This slide provides a high-level view of the steps that are specifically associated with preparing your NetBackup environment to perform VMware virtual machine backups. These steps assume that NetBackup backup storage has been properly configured. For more details on configuring NetBackup for VMware Virtual Machine Protection, refer to the Semantic NetBackup VMware Administrator's Guide, Release 7.6. The first step in configuring NetBackup for VMware Virtual Machine Protection is to configure one or more VMware Access Hosts, also referred to as Backup Hosts, in NetBackup. After configuring the VMware Access Hosts, the next step is to configure credentials to enable NetBackup to access the VMware Virtual Machine servers in your environment. These virtual machine servers include all vCenter servers, ESX servers, and vCloud Director servers that may be involved in VMware virtual machine backup and recovery operations. There are optional steps that can be performed such as the installation and configuration of the NetBackup vCenter plugin and the configuration to enable the use of the recovery portal that is provided by the NetBackup vCenter plugin. The NetBackup vCenter plugin has been installed and configured in this demo environment, but those steps are not included in this demonstration. Finally, you'll need to configure one or more NetBackup VMware policies to perform backups of VMware virtual machines. The steps to configure these policies are covered in another NetBackup 7.6 demonstration. This demo will cover only the first two steps listed on this page. In this topic, we'll demonstrate the steps for configuring VMware access hosts in NetBackup. Access the NetBackup administration console that is attached to your master server. In this demonstration, the master server is the system nb-master.lab.pvt. Select and expand the NetBackup management entry in the left pane of the NetBackup administration console. Under NetBackup management, select and expand host properties. Under host properties, click the master servers entry. The host name of your master server is displayed in the right pane of the administration console. Right click the entry for your master server. And in the resulting menu, click Properties. As a result, the master server properties window is displayed. Click VMware Access Hosts in the left pane of the master server properties window. By default, no VMware Access Hosts are configured. VMware Access Hosts are also often referred to as Backup Hosts. NetBackup Media Servers all have the capability to act as Backup Hosts. It is important to understand that the configuration of additional Access Hosts is not required if the Backup Media Server selection is made in the NetBackup Host to automatically perform Virtual Machine Discovery setting in the Clients tab of a VMware Type Policy. Using that setting, NetBackup automatically enables media servers to operate as VMware access hosts or backup hosts. Although it is unnecessary in this demonstration environment, for purposes of this demonstration, we'll show you the steps that are involved to configure the NB-MSDP media server to serve as a VMware access host. Click the Add button. Type the name of a VMware access host in the Add a New Server Entry dialog box. Then click Add to add the access host entry.
the name of the first access host is added and the add a new server entry dialog box is displayed again to enable you to type the name of another access host. When you have added all your access hosts, click close to close the add a new server entry dialog box. The VMware Access Hosts window should contain an entry for each of your VMware Access Hosts. Click Apply to make the changes to the NetBackup configuration. Click OK to close the Master Server Properties window. Take note of the message that is displayed and then click OK to close the message window. You have completed the first step the configuration of the NetBackup VMware Access Hosts. Collapse the host properties and NetBackup management branches in the left pane of the administration console. Now you are ready to configure credentials to enable NetBackup to access virtual machine servers in your VMware environment. The next topic in this demonstration is the configuring of credentials to enable NetBackup to access VMware vCenter and ESX hosts in your environment. Select and expand Media and Device Management in the left pane of the NetBackup Administration Console. Under Media and Device Management, select and expand Credentials. Under Credentials, click Virtual Machine Servers. The right pane of the administration console displays an entry for each configured virtual machine server. By default, no virtual machine servers are configured. Right click Virtual Machine Servers. Click New in the resulting menu. The Add Virtual Machine Server dialog box is displayed. Type the name of the first virtual machine server in your environment. In this demonstration, the host name of the vCenter server is vCenter.lab.pvt. Click OK. The Add Virtual Machine Server window is displayed. Select the Virtual Machine Server type from the drop down menu provided for that entry field. For this Virtual Machine Server, the server type is VMware Virtual Center Server. Next, enter the credentials, the username and password, that NetBackup will use to log into the virtual machine server. The For Backup Host field is used to associate the virtual machine server credentials with any backup host, that is, VMware Access Host, or with a specific backup host. Click the drop down arrow for the For Backup Host field. In this example, we'll use these credentials for any and all backup hosts when accessing the vCenter server. Click OK to save the virtual machine server credentials. When you save the virtual machine server credentials, NetBackup attempts to connect and log in to the virtual machine server to validate the credentials. If NetBackup is unable to log in to the virtual machine server, an error message like the one shown here is displayed. Click OK to acknowledge the message and then re-enter the credentials. If NetBackup is able to successfully log in to the virtual machine server, the message shown here is displayed. Click OK to acknowledge the message. Click OK to acknowledge the console message that is displayed concerning when credential changes take effect. The entry for the first virtual machine server, in this example the vCenter server, has been added. To add credentials for another virtual machine server, from the Actions menu select New, New Virtual Machine Server. Type the host name of the virtual machine server in the new virtual machine server dialog box. For this demonstration, we type the host name of the first ESX server, esxi-01.lab.pvt, and then click OK. Select the virtual machine server type. This virtual machine server has the type VMware ESX server. Then enter the username and password that is used to access the system.
In this demonstration, we'll use these credentials for any and all backup hosts that access this ESX server system. Click OK to save the virtual machine server credentials. NetBackup validates the virtual machine server credentials by connecting to and logging in to the virtual machine server. Click OK to acknowledge the console message that is displayed. Click OK to acknowledge the console message that is displayed regarding the potential need to restart NetBackup services. The second virtual machine server, ESXi-01.lab.pvt, has been added. Repeat the previous steps to add the second ESX server in this lab environment, ESXi-02.lab.pvt, as a virtual machine server. Select Actions, New, New Virtual Machine Server. Type the virtual machine server hostname, ESXi-02.lab.pvt. and click OK. Select the virtual machine server type and provide the username and password that NetBackup will use to access the system. Click OK to save the virtual machine server credentials. After the virtual machine server credentials have been successfully validated, click OK to acknowledge the console message. Then click OK to acknowledge the console message that describes the potential need to restart the NetBackup services. The third and final virtual machine server in this demo environment, esxi-02.lab.pvt, has been added. Now you are ready to create policies to perform VMware virtual machine backups. Policy creation is covered in another NetBackup 7.6 demonstration. Let's summarize what we've accomplished in this demonstration. First we configured the media server nb-msdp as a VMware access host. For media servers this step is unnecessary because all media servers can operate as an access host or backup host without the need to be manually configured. However, we wanted to demonstrate the process for configuring a VMware Access Host. This step is required for other NetBackup client systems that you want to use as VMware Access Hosts. Next we configured the credentials to enable NetBackup Access Hosts and Backup Hosts to access the virtual machine servers in our environment. vCenter.lab.pvt, esxi-01.lab.pvt, and esxi-02.lab.pvt. This step enables the configured NetBackup access hosts to access the VMware Virtual Center servers during virtual machine discovery, backup, and restore operations.